we must go now. Papa! Tiago, go with your mother to the trap. Take this. It will always be your guide. Yes, Papa. We will join you shortly. Xavier, the painting! A malediction. This way. Signora, it is too late. Go. Senor, in here. Search them. Of course. Paris in the spring. Passion, romance, L'Amour. I was working in art insurance. It paid the rent, just about. And then, by chance, I met Nico at a private view. You didn't tell me that you were back in Paris, Shosh. We should catch up. Let's have... Lunch? Nobody move! No, monsieur! Not la malediction. Oh. Stay back. Once again, Paris had shown me her dark side. A brutal robbery, a senseless murder. Nico and I were about to be drawn into a new and terrifying adventure together. The gallery owner was dead. I guess sometimes playing the hero doesn't pay. My company had insured the exhibition, so I had a crime to solve. The cops would be here soon. I didn't have much time. Poor guy. The priest was giving last rites to the gallery owner. I didn't want to interfere. The priest was administering the last rites. Excuse me, Father. Yes, my son. I'm George Stobart. My company insured the exhibition. My name is Simeon. Is there anything I can do? You can pray for his soul. A senseless murder. On the contrary, this killing makes plenty of sense. What do you mean? A great evil has taken place. This is the work of the devil. What? I am a Dominican priest. I know these things. And now, excuse me, I must pray. One minute I'd been planning dinner with Nico, the next I was talking art theft, murder, and the devil with a priest. There's nothing quite so lonely as a dead man's toupee. Here today, gone tomorrow. I always wondered who bought those white framed glasses. Now I knew. He definitely looked better. Poor guy. Poor guy. There was a small piece of paper in the dead man's hand. It was too intriguing not to take a look. It read, 2.30 p.m., be ready. Innocent enough, until I realized that the robbery took place at 2.30 p.m. There was something fishy going on around here, and it wasn't just the canapes. I quickly replaced the note. A small purple nozzle was poking out of his pocket. In Henri's pocket was a tiny bottle. It was a bottle of Brett. The label claimed it would 
Wake the beast within. There was no way anyone would have survived that. I didn't want Henri's blood on my hands. A cryptic note in a bottle of overpowering cologne. No personal effects or anything else of substance. I needed to find where he kept his records. The alarm still worked on that painting. I wondered why the stolen painting's alarm hadn't sounded. Challenging and experimental, like the 85K price tag. Sixty thousand for a sketch? Ouch! The label said it was painted in 1932. The gallery wanted 80 grand for it. Hmm. A rare glimpse into the absinthe addled mind of the artist. A snip at only 80 grand. The tag said 60 grand. Wow. Nice work if you can get it. Just 90,000 for this one. That bust was pretty impressive. I wondered who'd been the model. The bust was balanced precariously on the pedestal. I didn't want to knock it off. For the discerning connoisseur, a soupçon at 80,000. Seventy grand? Oh, cheap at half the price. All I needed was a mere 65,000, and this little gem could be mine. 55,000. Huh, shame. Just outside my price range. The murderer left a pizza box on the table. The thief left the pizza box behind. I wondered what was in it. Well, no surprise there. Pizza. The guy must have been hungry. There was only one slice left. Father? Yes, my son. What did you mean when you said that a great evil had taken place? Your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion, walketh about seeking whom he may devour. What? Peter 5.8 the devil is all around, Mr. Stobart. Did Henri say anything before he died? He said, Stop the car. I want to get in. Um, what does that mean? What brought you to the exhibition, Father? The painting. Which one? La Maledictio, of course. The painting that was stolen. I had to confront the evil. What do you know about the man who painted La Maledictio? El Serp. He was a man playing with fire. The fire of eternal damnation. Tell me about the stolen painting. Whoever gets close to it will burn in hell. Hey, Father. How about a squirt? I think not. Would you like this piece of pizza? A man has just died. No thank you. The poster looked old. I didn't want to touch it. Spanish modernists certainly didn't come cheap. I wondered how many paintings they'd sold at these prices. I could have bought a nice car for the price of that. 
As they say, every artist was first an amateur. There was no mistaking this body. It was Hector Lane, art critic extraordinaire. He and I had met before. For a moment, I thought he was dead, but from the snoring, I guessed he'd only fainted. Lane had fainted. I was gonna have to find a way to revive him. Lane was out cold. I was gonna need something to bring him around. Lane's jacket was stretched tight over his flabby form. A pair of nail clippers protruded from Lane's pocket. In the pocket was a pair of nail clippers. They were monogrammed with the letters H-L. Time to awaken the beast. <coughs> what? What was that? It smells like... like the 70s. Where am I? You fainted. <laughs> Lane had the kind of looks that only a lifetime of fine dining can create. Welcome back to the land of the living. I wouldn't exactly call this living. Don't just stand there. Get me something to eat. I've had a terrible shock, you know. I found a slice of pizza. I asked for food, boy, not a cardboard simulacrum. Oh, okay, if you don't want it. I didn't say that. Now give it here. Given the circumstances, that was surprisingly acceptable. Uh, now what's been going on? Oh, Henri, is he dead? Afraid so. Poor chap. Just like him to steal the limelight, though. Lane had the kind of looks that only a lifetime of fine dining can create. Excuse me. Do I know you? Yes, our paths have crossed. In the Glees Gallery? Of course. The man with the absinthe. I don't suppose you... Uh, afraid not. Pity. I'm sorry, but I'm having trouble remembering your name. I'm George Stobart. I insured the exhibition. <laughs> I hope you have deep pockets then, my boy. Could I ask you a few questions, Mr. Lane? Fire away. Did you know the gallery owner? Of course. We worked together on the exhibition. Oh, really? Henri provided the space. I was the creative powerhouse. How long had you known him? As a friend, many years. Our professional relationship had only recently blossomed into this exhibition under my curatorial wing. And now the poor fellow has gone and got himself killed. Do you know anything about the stolen painting? Of course, dear boy. La Maledicio, a little-known work, turned up at the last minute. What about the killer? Were you able to get a look at him? A delinquent in a tin hat. Beyond that, I don't really recall. Oh, yeah, you fainted. Those of us with a higher aesthetic are more sensitive to violence. So you curated the exhibition? What's it about? A brilliant retrospective. A dialectical window on European art's ongoing discourse with the unresolved psychoses of the nation-state. Wow, you took the words right out of my mouth. Who painted the stolen painting? Therein lies a mystery. We only know his pseudonym, El Serp. He was a Catalan, a modernist. His works are symbolic, religious. What can you tell me about the stolen painting? 
La Maledicio, a challenging piece. If you like a wide cast of obscure saints and fringe Christian symbolism, of course. Not especially valuable, though. The thief won't get much for it on the black market. How about some more of this? I don't think so. As a cell volatile, it was acceptable. As a cologne, it would be barbaric. Are these your nail clippers? Of course. See, they're monogrammed with my initials. This was where the stolen painting had hung. Why that painting? And why kill for it? The stolen painting had an alarm, which should have sounded when the painting was removed. I needed to find out why it hadn't. It was a vibration detector pad. I pressed the vibration detector pad. Nothing happened. It was the speaker cone for the alarm. It hadn't sounded when the painting was stolen. Looked fine to me. That wasn't the reason the alarm didn't go off. It was the speaker cone for... It was a small red button. So, the alarm wasn't broken. I suspected foul play. It was a small door. I guessed the alarm circuitry was inside. So that was why the alarm hadn't sounded. A wire had been cut by someone who knew exactly what they were doing. This was an inside job. The button bypassed the pressure pad system. Cutting the wire had disabled the pads. The door was marked private. With luck, the security camera had captured the robbery. The cable for the camera ran into the room marked private. The door was marked private. The door was locked with a keypad. If I wanted to get in there and look at the CCTV footage, then I'd need to find the number. Lane worked with Henri, so he was likely to know the code. I need to ask you a few more questions. If you insist, I'm still in shock, you know. So, you help run this place? Maybe you can give me the code to that door. The code to the office? I just thought you might have the number. I do, but I couldn't possibly give you access before the police arrive. I figured I wasn't going to get the door code from Lane by playing nice. I needed to turn the heat up. Mr. Lane, you're really going to have to give me the code to that door. And why, pray, should I do that? Because the way the cops will see it, you're the prime suspect. We both know you're innocent, Mr. Lane, but the cops, well, they may not see things so simply. I might be able to get them off your case, but in exchange, I'd like the code for the office door. But that's preposterous. The police would have neither evidence nor motive. Funny you should mention that. Someone sabotaged the alarm on the stolen painting. A wire was cut. What? Who could have got into the alarm system? Exactly. It was an inside job, Mr. Lane. You're not suggesting that I... Well, I'm afraid that's the way the cops are going to see it. That's preposterous. How could I possibly have cut the wire? This is an inside job for sure, Mr. Lane. 
The police are going to be very interested in your recent movements. I've been out of town for several days, and last night I retired early. Just saying. You're not going to scare me into giving you that door code, you know. I was onto something here, and I knew it. Lane was sweating. It wasn't pretty. Father? Yes, my son. I think there's something strange going on here. Yes, Mr. Stobart. At last you see the truth. No, Father. I mean that the robbery looks like an inside job. The devil's work is always an inside job. A wire in the painting's alarm was deliberately cut. Cut by the devil himself, perhaps. Well, as far as I know, sightings of guys with horns and tails have been a little down recently. You mock me, Mr. Stobart. But as you will discover, the devil likes to have the last laugh. Do you know the code to get into the office? No. But you could always pray and ask for divine guidance. With respect, Father, I'm looking for a slightly quicker solution. Take a look at this, Father. I've already given you my thoughts about that. Do you recognize these? Nail clippers? I'm not sure what your point is. The street was quiet and upmarket. Not the kind of place for an opportunist thief. From out here, you couldn't see the stolen painting. This robbery was definitely planned. The room looked like some sort of office for the gallery. I could just see the glow of the CCTV monitor in the corner. You gotta hand it to the French. They know how to take a leak in style. I've always been a sucker for Parisian stained glass. Excuse me. Monsieur? There's just been a robbery at the gallery. Oh, really? You don't sound surprised. All property is theft, monsieur. And all art is property. Therefore, all art is theft. Do you not agree? Uh, well, uh, when you put it like that, it's <clears throat> hard not to. Did you see anybody run out of the gallery earlier? There was a beautiful woman with a camera. She was chasing somebody. Oh, that must have been Nico. You know her? You surprised me. Can you tell me anything about the man she was chasing? I assume, monsieur, that like all of us, he is inherently unknowable. No wonder this guy's cafe was empty. The gallery owner, Henri, was shot dead trying to stop the robbery. Life has no meaning the moment you lose the illusion of being eternal. Right. Did you know him well? Can we ever truly know another human being, monsieur? He spent little time at the café, unlike his friend, monsieur Lane. What do you know about Le Lizard Bleu? It's bourgeois. Vacuous and overpriced. Just like its curator Lane. He's always in here, you know. Talking art to his latest flusier. 
What do you know about Hector Lane? Lane? Oh, yes. He drinks here sometimes. He slid away last night without paying. Last night? What sort of time? After midnight, for sure. If you see him, give him this bill and tell him to pay up next time. The check was from last night. But Lane told me he was nowhere near the gallery. This could be the leverage I needed to get the office door code from Lane. Thank you for your consistent indifference, monsieur. Perhaps next time you come, I will give you a coffee. Perhaps not. The Sacré-Cœur Basilica. The highest point in Paris. Impressive. How about it, Mr. Lane? Ready to give me the door code yet? Certainly not. Give me a single reason why I should. Guilty by way of nail clippers. I've been away from Paris for several days and only got back this morning. How could I have cut that wire? Take a look at this. What of it? It's your bill from the cafe next door. So? It's dated yesterday. Last night, in fact. 12.30, to be exact. You said you were out of town. You sure drank a lot of champagne last night without paying the bill. But you told me that you were away from Paris last night. I hate to say it, but that sounds like a lie to me. Tell you what, you give me the code of the door and the police need never know. A motive and proof of involvement. Not looking good, Mr. Lane. You are a blackmailer, Stobart. Just doing my job. <sighs> All right. You have me. The number is 6397. But I admit to none of these spurious accusations. I had the code. The police would be here any moment, so I had to work fast. What's that number again? Six, four, two, no. Everyone, hold it right there. Damn it. I am Inspector Navet of the Paris Serious Crime Squad, and I hereby declare this crime scene open. I mean, closed. Now, nobody move, especially you on the floor. Mo, I want a total lockdown. Nobody in or out. Apart from me, of course. I needed to get back into the gallery, but a familiar figure was guarding the door. It was Sergeant Mou. Our paths had crossed before. <laughs> 